Hi everyone! In this video tutorial, which is my first bridge builder tutorial, I'll show you how to build a teleporter. I'll call it that, but you can call it whatever you want, I don't mind. We just gotta have a common name for something like that, so I decided to name it teleport. What is it? It's an interactive area with an image in the background above which are three text cards arranged in three columns. You can use more or less than three columns, the choice is yours. When you hover the mouse over one of these three cards, the default background image is replaced with a new image associated with the card that we are hovering over. You can see that when you move the mouse over the card, a subtle animation of text occurs as well, and the two adjacent cards become slightly transparent. So let's create our teleport. We'll start with a blank section where I'll put my three pictures and my three text cards. However, I'm actually about to start with one unit model, and when I say one unit model, I'm thinking about one text card and one image associated to that, to that text card. And then once everything is working properly across all devices, including touchscreen devices, I'm going to duplicate both the text card and the image twice, okay? So I'm gonna add my first text card image from the media library. I make my image full size. I use the object fit cover property, why? Because I'll have to reduce the image height for mobile devices, which will definitely store the image. But with the object fit set to cover, we can maintain the aspect ratio of the image without any distortions. Caption type shall be none and the loading should be eager. No need for lazy loading with teleport. Now I have to add my text card. I have previously saved one as a template, so all I have to do is to insert the template, which is much quicker than starting from scratch. Text card is being placed below the image by default, and now I have to position it over the image. What I do instead is to position my image absolutely, so that it falls behind the text. The image should also be 100% wide and 100% high. You can notice that container height has been reduced to the text card height as a result of the image absolute position. Why? Because the parent container does not recognize the height of the absolutely positioned child elements. Now, in order to make the image comply or respect the parent container size, I'll change the container position to relative from static to relative and of course provide some height to the container because we have to be able to see the image, right? So the minimum height I use is going to be 62 VH. Because of the fact not only one text card will be used, I have to be sure that my flex container direction is set to horizontal for the row and that all the text cards are sitting in the container bottom. Our text readability is really bad and in order to fix that, I'll add a gradient overlay to the image itself. So I go to the, to the image style, then the gradient overlay panel, and I'm going to apply it to the overlay element. I'm going to create a two colors gradient, which will go from fully transparent black to the 70% black so that the darker part of the gradient paints the image area behind the text card. Now it's time to add a CSS class and the CSS ID to my image. I'm gonna need the CSS class for the styling purpose. You're gonna see how exactly in a minute. While the CSS ID is going to be used solely for the purpose of interaction. So the chosen CSS class name is IMG height and the CSS ID name is IMG box one. It has to be unique for each image where the number at the end corresponds to the text card number. All right, let me briefly explain the idea behind the teleporter changing images. So the idea is based on two different custom CSS classes that should be toggled simultaneously when two mouse events occur, the mouse enter event and the mouse leave event. For the mouse enter event, the default class is replaced by the new class and for the mouse leave event, the default class has been restored. There's gonna be two classes defined in my custom CSS code, the IMG hide that I just assigned to my first image and the IMG show. So the IMG height class is used to define the initial state of each image and the initial state is that they remain hidden and scale up a little bit 
which gives the impression of zoom-in effect. Another class called IMG Show is used to define the hover state and make images visible and back to the original size. Each step between the two states is animated by the CSS transform property. Even though it sounds complicated, once I put these words into the CSS code, you will see that it's very simple. My custom CSS code is attached, so to speak, to the top section. I could have added it to the page settings, but in that case it would not be exported with a template and you should add it separately, so it's much easier this way. You can download the teleporter template from the link provided in the video description. So the, the, the class IMGHide will have two properties. First one being transform and scale of 1.2 or 120%, which makes all images a bit wider and higher and gives us a starting position of the zoom in effect. And then the opacity of zero, this property will keep images hidden. But for a moment, I'll increase the initial opacity to, to 50% or 0.5, so you can see what the transformation value of 1.2 actually looks like. The class IMG show will also have two identical properties. It must have, we are animating these properties. So transform scale of one or 100%, which will scale the image back to 100%, and then the opacity of one, which will make the image visible again. You can clearly see that the image is breaking out of the top container. So this is probably the moment when I update one of my top container settings called overflow. Therefore, if I don't want breakouts to be visible, the overflow property must be set to hidden. Also, I think this is the right moment to set the default background image of my teleporter, and I'm going to pick one from the media library. My image is going to be full size, position is center center, repeat is no repeat, and the background size should be covered. Now that I have the default background image set, I go back to my CSS code and update the initial opacity of my first text card image to zero. Yet again, I have to improve the text card readability against the default background image, so I also add the gradient overlay to the default background image, just like I did to my first text card image. Let's move on to interactions now. To make a connection between mouse events and class toggle, you would normally use some JavaScript code. However, in Bricks Builder, the interactions are added through a simple interface, which makes it much easier for people who have no experience writing code. In our case, we need to create four different interactions. Two for the mouse hover event, or enter, which is also called mouse enter, all right? And two for the mouse leave event. Why two per event? because the first one is used to remove the IMG height class and the second one is used to add the IMG show class, all right? Likewise, the other two mouse leave events are used to reset everything back to the initial state. So, the trigger should be mouse enter, the action should be toggle attribute, we are toggling the class, the key, which corresponds to the attribute name, should be class, of course, the key's value is our class name, which is IMG hide. The target should be the CSS selector. And finally, the name of the CSS selector, which is the ID of the image, which is the target of the event. Don't forget to prepend the CSS ID with the hash sign. Now I just duplicate the interaction because each key value pair remains as is, everything is, remains as is, except the keys value, which is now IMG show, all right? If I were to summarize the two interactions I created, I would say that every time I hover over the first text card, the class IMG height is swapped with the class name IMG show for the element with the ID of IMG box one. As you can probably guess, the exact opposite interaction should be defined for the mouse leave event to reset everything back to the initial state. Since I have not created the mouse leave interaction yet, there is nothing to duplicate and I have to define mouse leave event from scratch. Once I have all the values defined, I can duplicate the interaction and just change the class name from IMG hide to IMG show.
At the end, I save the work and do the preview. The image change works as expected, but the change is not animated. It happens instantly. And most likely because I forgot to add the CSS transition to my image. Let's save the work once again and check if everything looks good. Alrighty, it's all fine. Now it's time to handle the mobile devices layout. On mobile devices, image should be followed by text. You can see that my text card already has a background color added, all right? So the image no longer requires to be absolutely positioned. Position is now relative instead of absolute. Opacity is no longer needed. So I set the opacity back to 100% or one. And the image height, like I said at the beginning, should be fixed on mobile devices. And I'm gonna use the image height of 38VH. Container height does not require minimum height of 62VH anymore. And I use auto instead. Let's save and preview for the first time for touchscreen devices like tablets or cell phones. Uh, iPhone 12 Pro will be just fine. Any of these will work just fine. Okay, since, since no hover event is possible on these devices, the effect we just created will occur on tap event instead. Some of you may be okay with how this works, others may not. And for those of you wondering how to prevent image animation on tap, there's a very simple CSS based solution to this. So I'm gonna use a simple media query which says at me at media hover none to check if the hover event is available. And if it's not, I just override the transform or the scale of 100% and the opacity of all images to zero. All right, this means that on touch sensitive devices, there will, be, there will never be an image change. I repeat, this is for those of you who want to prevent the animation on tap. Just a quick check in preview to prove that our media query is doing the job properly. As you can tell, it's all good. Okay, let's go one step further and animate the contents of the text card when we move the mouse over it. My text card already has a CSS class assigned. It is named text box. Although there is more than only one way to do this, I have chosen what I think is the best one and which also includes the custom CSS code. So the basic idea is to move each widget or element up by 20 pixels within the text card rather than simply increasing the bottom padding of the text card by 20 pixels. So each text card has a custom class name text box and each element inside the text card must have position relative because in Bricks Builder the initial position is always static and the static position cannot be animated. Uh, the top position it will be zero pixels in the beginning and the transition when it comes to the card hover properties. Because only the top position changes, I have to redefine the top position on a, on a card hover event. So it's gonna be minus 20 pixels because this is how we move elements up the Y axis. Our text card animation works out of the box in the editor, but if you find it annoying, you can simply prepend a bricks is front end to the text box class which will make the animation work only in the front end. It's a little trick. It's up to you to decide whether to use it or not. I'm gonna use it for the sake of this tutorial. If, for whatever reason, you want to disable our text animation on touchscreen devices, you'll need to add a CSS line within the media query to disable our animation on tab, okay? I don't think I need to emphasize that the tap takes over the mouse event, mouse hover event on touchscreen devices. Let's save and check everything in preview. It's all good on touchscreen devices. Desktops should also be fine, just a quick check. All right. Now that I'm absolutely sure that my one unit model works flawlessly across all devices. I just have to duplicate my image and the text card twice. 
In Bricks Builder, if you were to duplicate the element that has a custom CSS ID assigned to it, the duplicate itself shall not preserve it. So I have to assign a new ID to the two of the duplicates and I am going to use IMG Box 2 and IMG Box 3 for their IDs where numbers should correspond to the second and the third text card respectively. Now it's obviously time to update the image labels in a structure panel. So I'll append numbers to the end in order to keep everything clear and tidy. Let me now duplicate my text card twice. I will also drag each card, text card under the corresponding image in a structure panel. And for the sake of tidiness, I will update the text card labels too, and also change each card, each text card heading to something more appropriate. Of course, I should select a different image from Media Library for the duplicates I created. And at the end, I must update interactions for the two of my text card duplicates because at the moment all of interactions correspond to the IMG box one. All right, these are duplicates. So the text card number two interaction should trigger the IMG box two, which is the CSS ID of the second image. And the text card number three interaction must trigger the element with the CSS ID of IMG box three. Let's save the work and preview everything for both desktops and mobiles. It all seems to be working right. There's one more little thing to do. You have probably noticed that when I mouse over one text card, the other two become slightly transparent, which definitely adds to the overall impression, right? Because of the fact the way the CSS language works, it's technically impossible to style the adjacent text cards when the hover event occurs on one of them. For this reason, we have to start one level higher with our top container. Our top container hasn't been assigned a custom class yet, so we'll do that now and assign it the new class name. It's gonna be the wrapper. And here's the CSS plan. When hovering over the top container, the opacity of our three text cards drops to 30%, but when I hover over any of them, the opacity of just that particular card should return to 100%, while the other two retain the 30% opacity. Since I don't use the custom class Bricks is Frontend before the class name the wrapper, the effect is immediately visible in editor. Once again, if you don't like it being active in the editor, simply prefix the wrapper with bricks is front end. Okay? And finally, when it comes to touchscreen devices and you don't want the text card, the, the card text to animate when you tap on it, you need to disable or override the opacity change that we just set. All right, so I'm going to add another CSS line to my media query that should keep the opacity unchanged. I hope this tutorial wasn't too long and boring and I hope you learned something new. Again, you can download the finished template from the link in the description of this video if you like, free of any charges. I know this video probably comes as a surprise to many of you since all of my previous videos have been elementary related and I just want to mention that I'm planning to dedicate more time to Briggs Builder in the future. Why? Because it has not only become a real model of how modern page builders should work in just a few minor versions, but because it's, it's tailored exactly to the expectations of its users. Other than that, peace and love people.